Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to start a brand new series. And in this series, we are going to bring together a number of concepts we've already talked about on this channel. And we're going to build some hardware and software to do some real world data acquisition and control. And the hardware we're going to build, you can see here in this box, uh, we've got an Arduino inside. It's got a Wi-Fi antenna. And this Arduino we're using is very inexpensive, like a $5 Arduino with built-in Wi-Fi. Pretty amazing device. And you can see we've got an antenna hooked up to give it a wider range. And this is basically doing some data acquisition. We can set it up to do some control of remote devices. And this allows you to take this box and put it 100, 200, 300 feet away from your router, your Wi-Fi router and your computer and actually communicate with it and control devices and that kind of thing. We're going to show you how to build this box based on some stuff we've already talked about. And along with it, we're going to build what you see here on the right hand side, which is a C-sharp Windows Forms application. You can use any programming language you want. And what we're going to use it for in this case as an example is something we've talked about before, and that is to measure in real time the frequency of the voltage supplied to you by the power company at your wall outlet and monitor that frequency. And we talked in a previous video about what is electric power system frequency. We talked about how it's a really fascinating thing that you can actually measure in real time. And it kind of gives you a heartbeat of the power system that connects your state, your country, your town all together in one big grid. And you can see if it's um, overloaded or underloaded, kind of like a car going up a hill, getting overloaded or going down a hill and getting underloaded and speeding up. It's kind of the same thing. And what you see here is, is, is the application we're going to build. And basically this hardware is sampling the voltage every half second and measuring the frequency of the sine wave of the wall outlet voltage and sending that value over Wi-Fi to our computer. And our application is grabbing that data. You can see down here, it says 59.99 Hertz, 59.98. And what we're doing is we are charting it in real time on this chart you see up here. What we've got here is we've got a scrolling chart that shows the last 30 minutes of measured frequency from our wall outlet. And you can see right here, 60 Hertz, and it's bouncing around 60 Hertz. And our readout is showing that it's 59.98. And you can also see here behind this scrolling graph that the color of the background is changing. And that is changing based on the frequency. And you can see 59.98, that's a little bit below 60 hertz and it's a light blue. And the reason we're doing this is to compare our readings, our local readings, with what you see here on the left. And this is a website, very fascinating website from the University of Tennessee at Knoxville. And they have done some really uh, interesting things. They have sent out some devices to measure wall outlet frequency, not unlike what we're doing here. And they've sent it out all over the world to various countries. And you can see here a lot of different countries, they have measuring devices. They're sending it back the results over the internet. And University of Tennessee is gathering that data and updating these maps with these colors. And you can see here the color on my chart is 60.02.03, which means it's slightly above and it's matching what you're seeing here on the map. Now, I'm located in the eastern half of the United States, which you see here. As we talked about in our previous video, what is electric power system frequency? Here in the U.S., um, there are different grids or interconnections where whole areas of the electric power system are tied together in isolated grids. And in my case, you can see we've got yellow on my chart and there's a matching yellow in the eastern U.S. There's a separate grid we talked about in the Western US and Western Canada. Um, there's another grid up here in Quebec, Canada. Uh, Texas has its own grid and then Mexico. And then of course, other countries here in Europe and uh, India and China, they have their own grids. So what you can see is that we have some real time updating of real time frequency and all of the frequencies in a grid are about the same, 
fairly close, in our case, to 60 hertz. And here we are, um, my graph is going green down to about 60 hertz, and we can inspect that, you know, that changes down to green. So we're matching pretty close to what you see here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to do this, how to make this hardware and bring together a lot of concepts we've already discussed and how to make this all work together so that uh, all of the different aspects of this work well and we don't get garbage data. Now, since we've talked about a lot of the concepts behind the hardware and the software already, why do we need to discuss anything else? What you'll see is a lot of hobbyists on the internet will focus on things that they think they know and they'll focus on a topic and they'll say, I know that particular item, like I know how to measure frequency, therefore I'm an expert in measuring frequency. However, in the real world, when you start to bring these different concepts together, like Wi-Fi and measuring frequency and writing software applications and gathering data over Wi-Fi, you start to realize in the real world, if you want all that to work together, there's a lot of different aspects that you need to understand. And a lot of those concepts are counterintuitive or not intuitive. And you never would have thought of them until you actually get to where you're building a box, you're connecting with Wi-Fi, and you're reading the data, you start to realize, hey, there's a lot more to this. If I want it to work, I have to worry about parsing data. I have to worry about verifying the data is real. It's not nonsense. And there's a lot of other concepts you need to be aware of if you want this all to actually work. So we're gonna talk about those. We're gonna show you how to bring it all together and get everything to work. Now, some of the things we've talked about previously as I said, in here, we've got a very inexpensive, like a $5 Arduino Uno with built-in Wi-Fi. We talked about how to set that up, how that works. We had a few videos talking about how to program it, how to write sketches. Um, we also talked about TCP IP communication over Wi-Fi, how to set up this Arduino as a client and our computer as a server. We talked about Wi-Fi antennas, how they work, and um, this is a very inexpensive antenna you can get for this. We talked about how it can improve the range. We talked about other things that you will probably never think of unless you get involved with this, and that is, for example, let's say that this device, which is connected over Wi-Fi, let's say if it loses power or we move it outside the range of the Wi-Fi, you don't want your application, your C-sharp to freeze, you want it to gracefully disconnect from this and look for other clients or look for this thing to come back into range. So those are the kind of things we're going to talk about where you have to make sure you understand how to implement those things. We also talked about measuring frequency with the Arduino. We talked about timers and events. Very important and can be kind of complicated concepts that you need to understand. Um, we also, again, talked about electric power system frequency and how fascinating that is and how that gives you a really good indication of what's going on. As you can see here, we've got our different grids with different colors. And down on the bottom, we've got a color scheme that explains, hey, if you're within 0.01 hertz of 60, like 60.01 to 59.9, you should get a green color. And as it goes higher, it will be yellow, orange, red. So you can see in the western U.S. it's a little bit high, and in the eastern we're also a little bit high, but not as high. And then in Mexico it's a little bit low because it's in the light blue to dark blue range. And you can look around the world and you can see that um, it's very low in the United Kingdom and normal in Europe. So um, we talked about all of that and how that works. So we're going to have to include that in our code to figure out what the colors are and how we can match them. We also talked about a zero crossing detector, an opto isolator that we use to connect the power system voltage to our Arduino. Uh, that was in another video, so I encourage you to take a look at that. We talked previously about how to employ some filtering on your input data to clean it up a little bit. And then one of the very important things is if we're receiving data over Wi-Fi, you need to make sure that everything's synchronized and you're parsing the data correctly because you can get some incorrect sets of data if you don't time everything right. We talked about data parsing, error checking, verification, 
And as you can see here, one thing we're doing to verify that our data is legit is we are comparing it to this website that also has real-time frequency measurements. So data verification, very, very important, but it's something you may not consider um, when you're just looking at uh, individual concepts. And then we talked about charts, how to get the scrolling data. Um, and you can see here we've got multiple forms. We've got two forms, Windows forms. We talked about that in another video. So this series, we're going to try and bring all of this together and get something that actually works. And we're going to see the difficulties we encounter if we don't design it well and we don't think about it. We're going to get some garbage coming in, which means the results are going to be garbage if we don't plan this and design it correctly. So now let's first take a look at some of the things that we're going to have to decide on and be aware of and plan for when we're developing this hardware and software. Again, there's a lot of things that um, you wouldn't think about until you actually get into this. And hopefully these, this list will help us figure out what we need to address. So for hardware, how are we going to program the Arduino? Let's say we've got our Arduino inside the box. How are we going to program it? Do we want to have an external USB connector that you can plug into your computer, into the box that's connected to the Arduino that you can program it? Or do we want to just take the cover off the box and grab the Arduino and program it that way? So we're going to have to think about that. On-off switches. Do we want on-off switches for the power to the Arduino? Do we want on-off switches for what we're measuring? We have to think about that. Any indicator lights, when, when the thing is powered on, do we want an LED in the um, box to show us that something's turned on? And more importantly, what's the power source going to be for the Arduino? You know that you can use either a barrel jack, which is like a 7 to 12 volt DC to power the Arduino, or you can use the USB connector to power the Arduino and also communicate with it. So we have to decide do we want a separate barrel jack connector on the box? Do you want a USB connector or do we want both? How are we going to do that? And then we have to think about mounting. We've got an a Arduino that's going to go into the box. How are we going to mount it? We're probably going to have another, in our case, our um, opto-isolator circuit. We're going to have to figure out how to mount that. We're going to have to think about cooling. Is there anything in our box that's going to be warm or hot that we may have to put a fan? Um, we're going to have a transformer, might, might get kind of warm. Um, and also, are we going to outfit this box to do data acquisition or control or both? Are we going to have um, connectors, data and controlled I.O. connectors, so that we can plug into the box to access some of the GPIO pins? How are we going to do all that? So that's just some of the hardware things we need to consider. And with software in our C-sharp application, there's a lot of stuff we're going to have to plan for. Um, we said we have some charting. We're doing some scrolling. Also scaling. As you can see on this chart, we're fixed at 59.8 to 60.2. So the, the normal frequency is about 59.95 to 60.05. And 99% of the time, at least here in the U.S., it stays in that range. However, we have to think about scaling. If it goes outside that range, do we want to auto scale? Also, if there's an event where it goes outside the normal range, we might want to change the scaling so we can see the, uh, the full range of the frequency. And then we talked about background colors to match the University of Tennessee website. Um, also, do we want to have access to multiple clients and also an auto connect feature? We might have multiple boxes and we want to be able to connect those automatically. We have to think about that. Also, we only are using a one GPIO pin, the, the digital two. We're taking our, our wall outlet voltage, converting it to a square wave and feeding that into D2. Um, do we want to allow for multiple GPIO pin access? And then with event recording, we're measuring frequency. What if it gets outside the normal range? We probably want to record on the abnormal frequencies in a chart, we got to figure out how we're going to do that. And most importantly, and things that the thing that people fail to consider is error checking and verification. Um, how do you know that the data you're getting from the Arduino from the client is any good? You need to check it. You need to verify, make sure the numbers are correct, which means you're going to have to have a lot of feedback. And I talk in most of my videos on C Sharp, you need to have a 
text box that gives you feedback of values at each step in the process. What are the values you're actually dealing with? Don't just assume you know, because you probably don't. So what are the actual values and what are also the hidden characters that might be messing you up? So you need a lot of error checking and verification and feedback to show you what you're getting. Uh, we have to think about data format and parsing and verification of the data. What format is it in? Make sure we understand exactly what's going on. And then what's, let's say we get one bad reading. What are we going to do? Are we going to ignore it? Are we going to skip it? Or are we going to try and make sure that we don't have any bad data? Are we going to spend extra time to find the root cause and try to fix one bad bit of data that happens once an hour? Maybe not. And then data processing and filtering. We've talked about that before, how you can filter out some bad data. So these are some things we're going to have to figure out in the software realm. And then in the Arduino programming. Um, what are we going to, you know, it's going to measure frequency at the D2 pin. Is it going to send the raw counter values or is it going to calculate what the frequency is and have the C-sharp application calculate the actual frequency? Uh, what data format are we going to send over Wi-Fi? Um, and what's the timing? We got to make sure we have reasonable timing between sending data so that, so that we don't, for example, get our bus buffers filled up and we've got a bunch of nonsense. So we got to think about the details of the format and the timing and the buffers. And then keep in mind, we've got the ATmega328 and the ESP8266 that are talking together. The ESP8266 is handling the Wi-Fi and that's going to interact with the C-sharp. So we've got these three areas that we need to make sure everybody's talking the same language and we know what the format is and what we're going to have exactly in that data so we know how to parse it and convert it. So these are just some things we're going to have to deal with. And in the next video, we're going to talk about these and figure out how we're going to resolve these and how we're going to actually design this. So I encourage you between now and the next video, um, I encourage you to hang in there and stick with it and think about some of these things that um, how you would resolve them and what you would do for the hardware and the software and the Arduino to configure it so that everything's going to work fine. And also, if you can think of other things in your mind, add them to this list and see how you would resolve them. So that's it for this one. If you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.